Everybody knows that New York City is one of the greatest cities in the world, but what people sometimes forget is that there are nearly two million New Yorkers who are living at or below the poverty level. And these are real live flesh and blood children and adults who are struggling each and every day to get by, to keep a roof over their heads, to get food and clothing to meet their basic needs. Who was I gonna turn to? They didn't just give me an eviction, they locked me out of my apartment. We didn't have a social, we couldn't get a job, we couldn't do all the things that all the other kids did. I'm from Afghanistan. I lived in for 26 years in New York. The letter I got, they said February the 28th, you, you, you yeah, make it empty. I'm so worried, I'm so scared. I need to, like help for food, clothes, and uh, sometimes I have problem to buy pumpers. I don't know what I would have done if I didn't go to legal aid. The purpose of the first interview is for us to get a general sense of the issues in your case. Each and every day, our staff are really the voices for very vulnerable New Yorkers who turn to the Legal Aid Society as a place of last resort for the legal help that they need. We try to fight for them and with them and with their families in the community to making sure that they have what uh, this country and this city promises to everyone. With a staff of 1,450 people, including more than 850 lawyers, every year we're handling more than 295,000 cases. It's a staggering caseload, but the need in New York City is staggering. The Legal Aid Society is divided into three practice areas. We have the criminal practice, the juvenile rights practice, and the civil practice. In the civil practice, we represent individuals and groups in the community on a range of issues, be it housing, disability, immigration law, family and domestic violence, just about everything that you can imagine. The type of assistance that the government provides is really minimal. And as soon as anything arises that's slightly out of the ordinary, someone will find themselves in a hole. I got a call from my daughter, um, screaming and crying. She told me that her five-month-old daughter had died. I knew I had to go to her to help her out. They didn't wait for me to come back or take care of anything. They just automatically went and evicted me illegally. They tell me now they're going to give me papers stay here, I can help them to find the guy who killed my sister, because he tried to kill me too. When I first met Mariam, she was struggling on what she was earning herself without any public assistance help, because she'd been wrongly denied benefits by the center to which she'd applied, due to a pervasive misunderstanding of immigrant eligibility rules and misapplication of those rules. We knew that this was happening to um, a large number of immigrants throughout the city. Mariam agreed to participate in the lawsuit and to tell her story, and she did. And as a result of Mariam's help and her bravery, um, we were able to uh, win uh, a tremendous victory for immigrants throughout New York City. This is my one-bedroom apartment. I have a, a couch here that lets out into a bed in which I sleep on. I have a 14-year-old son, he's in school now. He suffers from autism. And the landlord was just trying to just kick us out in the street. I work in the immigration unit at Legal Aid on a project for young people who've been abandoned, abused, and neglected by their parents. And we try to help them uh, achieve permanent residence in cases where they're eligible. I was aging out, and I met Katie in November, and I was aging out January the 19th. Usually the applications take about a year. Some of them take longer. And we had two months. <laughs> I became a single parent of a girl, and everything I do, I do for her, because it's her future that's most important right now. Mr. Hemingway came to me because he'd been denied admission to public housing because of some prior offenses that he committed when he was a youth. I represented him at an impartial hearing, uh, and um, we were able to reverse that determination. I appreciate his help, you know, because, like I said, I couldn't do it without him. You know, he's a good man. I meet him. He's very nice. He's oof. When I met Ms. Akbaria, she was very, very nervous. And I keep reassuring her that we're going to do everything in our power to assist her.
And when the case was finally dismissed, she was full of joy. We also have the juvenile rights practice. Our attorneys and our support staff are paralegals, and our social workers, they assist children who are in family court. Our clients range in age from infancy to 21. We give them a full range of legal services for any sort of case that happens here in court, but we also work interdisciplinarily with social workers that allows them to get access to educational services, social services, mental health services, and challenge agencies that aren't actually meeting their needs. In the criminal practice, we have attorneys and paralegals and social workers that assist people who are accused of crimes on a range of issues. What we're doing is we're representing the Constitution. We're there to make sure that the rules are followed. And if the rules are followed, hopefully the jury will come out with the proper verdict. It's important that we have legal aid because there are many people in my jurisdiction who cannot afford an attorney. Not only can they not afford an attorney, they need someone to represent and fight on their behalf and are unable to do so without adequate representation. On the criminal and juvenile rights side, it's a governmental obligation to provide representation, and so there's funding that comes from uh, the state and the city. But on the civil side, unfortunately, we have to depend upon the generosity of uh, individuals. And because of lack of resources, currently we're turning away six out of every seven people that turn to us with a civil legal problem. She's saying if, if I could, I would give him a medal, a gold medal. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. This is basically what it's all about. What our staff does is make a difference in the lives of these New Yorkers, and we need the support of individuals to enable us to continue to do so, to provide help to children and families who are sometimes invisible in the city.